Everybody, late night crypto talk. What's going on, Barbara? This is going to be a funny episode tonight. This is not for everybody. You have sensitive ears. You want to log off now. What's going on, my Morehouse brother Marquise? What's happening, Sebastian? Hope you guys are enjoying your Friday evening. How you doing, Armore? Thank God it's Friday today. Ready for the weekend. As I said this morning, I like every day to be a Saturday. We'll be getting started in just uh, about another minute or two. Exciting times in the crypto world. How you doing, Vanita? Hope you're enjoying your Friday evening. Lakers just won. I'm in a good mood. <laughs> What's going on? Rick Sanchez, how you doing? Hey, hey, what's happening, Shanna? How you doing, Erica? And Bonita, welcome. We have an interesting conversation tonight. Hope you guys are ready for it. Is my voice echoing for everybody else? You doing in? That's right, weekend off, huh? <laughs> I don't know why that is. Why I'm coming through muffled. Let's hope we can uh, get this out without any major problems here. How you doing, Diane from Canada? How about now? Kind of moved it. Am I still muffled or coming through clear? Is there any sound issues? Oh, you know I had to wait till the game ended. <laughs> I would have did this an hour and a half ago. I had to watch the liquor game. And it's Friday night. What's going on, Nicole Burke? <laughs> All right, all right, let's get this, go ahead and get started. You know, here's one thing that I know is true. 
The cryptocurrency industry is the greatest economic shift in wealth for the most amount of people in human history. The blockchain technology is going to disrupt every major industry on the planet. And I mean every industry. That includes the legal, the illegal, the adult entertainment industry as well. And this article I'm going to read about is pot. <laughs> Cannabis. Weed. What does that have to do with the blockchain? Well... If you're in the United States, you know that there's been a huge movement to legalize cannabis in all 50 states. I'm in the state of California where they have legalized it. And, of course, you're going to have the blockchain crypto enter the cannabis market. So, this one is the highest coins of 2018. Cannabis and the blockchain. So, let's take a look at this. The cannabis industry has been booming across the United States for the last few years. The most significant problem plaguing the industry as a whole is banking and physical, fiscal transactions. Blockchain technology has already begun entering this space and seeks to provide solutions where they are needed most. This is a touchy subject for many in the legal field, as currently federal law which trumps state law, declares marijuana a Schedule I drug. The United States Drug Enforcement Agency states a Schedule I drug must have no known medical benefit and a high possibility for abuse. The list of Schedule I drugs includes heroin, LSD, marijuana, mescaline, MDMA, GHB, ecstasy, psilocybin, methaqualona, some stuff I never heard of, Cat and bath salts. Bath salts? What in the world is people doing with bath salts? You know, I am out of the game. I don't know this stuff. This means the DEA has classified marijuana among the company of heroin and bath salts. What is more surprising is Schedule II drugs include oxycodone, phenylene, and Adderall. The difference in classification is because the DEA acknowledges a high potential for abuse of the stated Schedule II drugs, but they have a medical purpose. Currently, the U.S. federal government's stance on cannabis is it has no medical purpose and is likely to be abused. The DEA has been requested and sued to change the classification of marijuana, but has chosen not to. And not been forced to do so regardless of studies demonstrating marijuana's benefits. The United States, as a great country as it may be, has chosen to classify marijuana among drugs like heroin, even though countless studies are demonstrating its many benefits. Oh, is that what they do in bath salts? They're using it like meth? Yeah, I can see people going crazy with that stuff. The United States federal government may have made a clear error in their classification of cannabis, but more than 25 states at this point have decided to ignore the demands of the federal government and allow the implementation of both medical marijuana programs and recreational programs. Currently, there are more than 29 states with medical marijuana programs and more than 10 with recreational consumption systems in place. A comprehensive list of state laws Regarding the medical marijuana can be found here. you got to go to the link to see that. In 1996, California was the first state to create a medical marijuana program. 22 years later, and the United States still has state laws that conflict with federal laws, along with state laws that conflict with other state laws. This has created a major dilemma for those seeking marijuana as both a medicine and recreational product. In 2018, Vermont was the newest addition of states that added recreational marijuana programs, with more than the majority of states allowing medical marijuana recreational use, or both. It seems to be the time to adjust the federal law to, def to reflect the new studies that have been done using cannabis. 
This conflict between state and federal law has created banking issues that the blockchain looks to resolve. For operational dispensaries, the largest problem they are currently facing is a banking issue. Banks that operate in multiple states and federally will not allow any account that is medical marijuana or recreational related. This creates a situation where you have legitimate business owners that are completely unable to use the standard banking system in a state where they intend to follow all the laws, state laws that is. The level of risk in a business where credit card processors fail regularly and cash is the primary means of transacting is very high. So if you guys, uh, if you're in California, you know what I mean. A lot of these medical marijuana spaces, they operate in cash only because they can't get a bank account because some of the banks, you know, they're looking at federal law, not state law, even though it's legal. So that creates a huge problem, which is where blockchain is going to come in, but I'll get there in a second. Blockchain technology can reduce the risk while solving the banking issues that currently plague the entire medical and recreational marijuana industry in the United States. What's happening in Miss Alaska, Christy? Snotty. <laughs> By removing power from the central banks, which is what cryptocurrencies do, medical and recreational facilities will be able to transact on the blockchain. Unlike many developing blockchain markets, the cannabis coin niche already has many early entrants. The five cannabis-related coins we've selected to analyze are POT, THC, DOPE, CCN, and GRWI. No, wait, wait, what happened to Paragon? The coins are ordered based on which the author feels is the most undervalued and will have the most market adoption in the short and long run. All right, this is telling me something. You know, I invested in Paragon last year, and I don't see them on the list. Do I want to go through every one of these coins? No, I don't, because it's going to be here a long time. So you've got the pot coin. You've got, so the price of the pot coin right now is 23 cents per coin. You've got THC, which is the hemp coin. That price is at 37 cents. You've got dope coin. And let's see, do they talk about what their price is? No. You've got the Canna coin, CCN. Let's see, no, no price on that. Yeah, 17 cents per coin. GRW coin, GRWI, Growers International. That's the smallest of the five coins with a market cap of 2.3 million. So why you put this on here? Let's, let's go with the conclusion. Pot first and THC second. Don't judge a book by its cover. However, realistically speaking, most of us do. The general investing public does as well. Very few delve deeply into the teams, chart analysis, market penetration, technology, and the market cap. To recommend buying a coin based on its ticker symbol would be asinine, but it does help that pot and THC both have the most relevant ticker symbols for the industry they are trying to capitalize on. POT has slightly more market adoption, awareness, and publicity than THC, which in the short term can mean a huge difference in price appreciation. The author is very bullish on cryptocurrency, especially the cannabis industry coins for first quarter of 2018 especially following the most recent market correction and the wave of new recreational laws that have passed, pot seems to be the clear leader with THC being a worthy number two. With the medical marijuana industry booming and their biggest flaw currently being banking, blockchain technology has the ability to truly penetrate and capture a significant portion of a multi-billion dollar space. POT should beat standard crypto returns in first quarter and for the remainder of 2018 with THC being a solid second option. So in other words, you know, it might be wise to add the POT industry into your portfolio 
when it comes to crypto investing in. Before I say that, so somebody thinks I'm advising, as a disclaimer, I am not a licensed financial advisor to be giving any financial or investment advice. I am an individual investor that reads the news and shares my opinion and suggestions. You take that, do your own research, and do it whatever you will. All right. You guys ready for the next? Because this is some important stuff. I, like I said in the beginning, blockchain technology is going to interrupt every single industry on the planet. And I mean every single one. That includes the adult entertainment industry. That's right. You know that old term, sex sells. Sex has been selling since the beginning of time. It always has been, it always is, and it always will be. So it means, of course, the crypto industry is going to enter the sex industry. Now, <laughs> I don't know what it was, maybe two weeks ago. We talked about the uh, porn industry entering the space with, with porn actresses accepting Bitcoin. And here's one thing. When, when you hear a politician or a banker and you hear these guys say, Bitcoin is not real. It's fake money. It's fake news. The moment they visit their little special girl of the night the call girl the prostitutes and the prostitutes are now accepting bitcoin then you know it's real money because a prostitute ain't going to accept no monopoly money a prostitute isn't going to accept nothing that's not valuable to them and if they say bitcoin is money <laughs> then bitcoin is money all right, let me pause that. Let's get into why. Let's get into why I even say that. Tonight's article, Bitcoin meets brothels at Nevada's Bunny Ranch. The Bunny Ranch. Everybody, well, you know, I can't say everybody because some of you may not admit to it. But you should be familiar with the Bunny Ranch in Arizona. Now, you should be familiar, not Arizona, I mean Nevada. You should be familiar with that. I think they had their own HBO special, or what was it, late night something HBO stuff? Remember how they had like taxi cab confessions? Here we go. Now people say I'm muffled again. Am I muffled? Let me know. I don't know why. Some say I'm coming through clear. Some say I'm muffled. What about the music? Is that muffled too? Maybe it's when I have the music on that I'm sounding muffled. I don't know. What's going on, LaShana? Came on just in time. So figures, when I start talking about some, some actual entering, interesting stuff and not nerd talk, Facebook Live wants to mess with my audio. <laughs> So I don't know why it goes in and out, because I haven't moved at all. All I did was either play music or not. So we're going to talk about the Bunny Ranch. Now, you all know what goes on at the Bunny Ranch. I, I mean, I, I don't have to really break it down to you, do I? Is that where Lamar Odom lost his damn mind? Was that at the, the Bunny Ranch? Or was that somewhere else? Similar, similar place the brothel now why is this major news not just for those of you that love sex this is major news because you've got the oldest trade in the world is seeing bitcoin as valuable as a real currency as money that's a good sign of the longevity of where bitcoin is going if you're not a believer, you're a believer of sex. So let's read this article here. 
Bitcoin meets brothels at Nevada's Bunny Ranch. Presently, the Bunny Ranch, the well-known Las Vegas brothel, is hoping to take advantage of the new craze. The setting of the HBO, yeah, I knew it was an HBO show. I'm not saying I ever saw it. Yes, I did. The setting of the new HBO, of the HBO show Cat House, <laughs> the Bunny Ranch reported it, is the latest retailer to get on board the Bitcoin bandwagon due to growing interest in digital forms of money. Dennis Hoff said that his brothels are right now mulling over various ways to take Bitcoin as a new method of payment for services. <laughs> Can you imagine, you know, you go up into the cat house, right? And all the women, they come on out like a buffet line and you, you select which one you want. I, I, I only know this because I saw it on TV, all right? Don't, don't judge me. I saw it on TV. So you, you choose the woman and she's got like a little, well, how, how would that work? I mean, when she have a smartphone out with a little QR scan code and you just scan your Bitcoin right onto it and get busy? Is that how it will work? I don't know. I'm curious. But the fact that they're accepting Bitcoin is hilarious to me. <laughs> so it says, what we have or we have some of the richest men in the world coming in and out of my brothels, Hoff said in an official statement. Our high dollar clientele is accustomed to getting anything they want here. So when I started hearing requests for them to look into accepting Bitcoin, I took those suggestions very seriously. All right, so why would a high clientele rich guy want to use Bitcoin instead of dollars? Well, think about it. I mean, a lot of these dudes are probably married or they've got a significant other attached to their bank account. Hey, honey, why, what's this cat house uh, receipt on the, on the bank statement? But if you use Bitcoin, that's completely anonymous. That can't be traced. It's not going to show up on any credit card report. Now, I'm not, I'm not giving you fellas out there any ideas. I'm just, I'm just stating a fact here. All right. So don't be, don't be sitting there taking notes like, wow, uh, Brandon, Brandon's got some new point, good points there. When I want to do my, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just stating a fact. Bitcoin is untraceable. That's right, Roland. So let me let me continue. <laughs> Hoff claimed that more than a few clients have consistently been demanding more information about Bitcoin as of late. Out of around 100 clients for every day. Wait a minute. The Bunny Ranch gets 100 clients every day. I don't. I am them. Them girls are making some money. They're making some serious money. And if they're taking Bitcoin, you know, that's the gift that keeps on giving, right? I mean, it's better for the, the, the what do I call her? Not, I don't want to call her a prostitute, but she's working at the brothel. Uh, lady, lady of the house. My wife says she's a prostitute. All right. So the gentleman that's making the payment gets, you know, his hour or whatever, right? And then he's on his way. But if he pays with Bitcoin, and the value of Bitcoin right now is $10,000 or $11,000, she did the deed, right? And then two weeks later, the value of Bitcoin could jump up to $15,000. She just got, she just made more money off work she did weeks ago. <laughs> This just makes smart business sense for the client who wants to remain anonymous and the prostitute who is like getting residual income on her own work. <laughs> I like that. Residual prostitution. All right. Let me keep going. <laughs> and you got these guys, you got these guys, uh, you know, a hundred clients every day for the time being. Hoff will likely process the Bitcoin transactions just like a card payment 
and after that, pay the 500, the 540 female escort. He's got 540 female escorts, a standard sum in dollars. Oh, okay, all right. The, the pimps are getting all the money here. See, women, if you're going to engage in this trade, you might be smart to say, here's my Bitcoin wallet. You scan this QR code. You're going to allow the pimp to get the Bitcoin and then the pimp pays you in U.S. dollars that is only depreciating in value while the pimp is sitting on the Bitcoin that's going to go up in value. Hey, they said they said pimping ain't easy. I mean, the pimps are. They're making a killing. <laughs> it's the brand new hustle. Hell yeah, charge Bitcoin. And then pay your your girls in US dollar. See, see, ladies, this is where education comes in. These girls probably don't even understand or know what Bitcoin is. They just glad they get it's like that, it's like that Stormy Wellington video. Alright. I, I I hate to bring Stormy up, but it's a known public fact. That Stormy used to be a prostitute, and I'm not sorry, not a prostitute. Let me take that back. Used to be a stripper in Atlanta, Georgia. It's her. It's her story. <laughs> she wasn't just any stripper either. She was a famous one, made bank as a stripper. She joined the I mean, the MLM world and became a seven-figure earner in the MLM world. And then what she would do is go into the same strip clubs like Magic City, the places she used to visit. I know she wasn't up in Montres. Hell no. It's a local spot. But she would go up in there, and she would pay for lap dances from the girls, and then she would flash, she was like, you know, she would flash stacks, stacks of money, and say, look, I used to be a stripper. But now I got involved as an entrepreneur in my own business in the direct selling MLM world. Now look how much money you can make. You ain't got to shake your ass to make this money. That's what she would do. But but check this out, though. Crypto, uh, Stormy finds out about cryptocurrency. Is she positive about it? No. You know what she did? She starts flashing U.S. dollars saying, this is real money, not that crypto stuff, not that Bitcoin stuff. This, the U.S. dollar is king, baby. And she's flashing that money. Now, if I was a pimp, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? Most of these girls have no idea what Bitcoin is. Yeah, let me give them the U.S. dollar. That's all they know. Let them flash that around while I keep the Bitcoin. That's going to go up in value. And Stormy is a perfect example because she's not a dumb person. She's very intelligent, very successful, multimillionaire that thinks the U.S. dollar is king and has more value than Bitcoin. And if Stormy don't get it, what do you think all the girls at the Bunny Ranch, do you think they understand Bitcoin? I'm not being, you know, sexist or anything because I just did an article the other day that said that Less than 5% of all Americans even own Bitcoin. So I'm making a factual statement here. And we're going to talk about the bar in a moment. You fellas want to get some crypto booty. I'm going to show you how in a second. But let's get back to this article. I find this highly fascinating. <laughs> That's right. Even less are diverse women. Where are the women? Where are the boss ladies at in this space? Christy, I know what she's doing up there in, in Alaska. What about Lashana up there in Central California? Let's see here. What do we have next here? What is that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 540 female escorts, a standard sum in dollars. The escorts themselves would not take any cryptocurrency for their work. This implies they won't gain any of the benefits of Bitcoin payments, such as avoiding discrimination from financial institutions. Really? Really? See, I know what the dude here did here. He's taking all the Bitcoin and paying them in U.S. dollars. <laughs> Hoff, 
additionally disclosed to the outlet International Business Times that big players in the Bitcoin industry moved toward him with offers to help dispatch his cryptocurrency for his brothel. His legal group is investing these offer or is investigating these offers. We're definitely digging into it, he said. Man, this dude is about to get paid more than normal. He is he is setting up a crypto bitcoin sex hustle. Hustle. This is the ultimate hustle he's doing here. And he didn't even got to worry about the banks. Now, I don't know how taxes is going to work on him on this. But he's figured it out. Other Nevada organizations, for example, the Legends Room. Is that where Lamar was? I thought Lamar might have was at the Bunny Ranch. But the Legends Room officially offer escorts the decision to be paid in dollars or cryptocurrency. Okay, so now they're giving the girls the option. Now, I wonder how many of these girls are choosing the cryptocurrency as an option. I doubt it. I think they're still choosing dollars because that's all they know. That club is likewise inquisitive about other blockchain systems. For example, Ethereum and Ripple's XRP. Hoff intends to begin with Bitcoin and oversee the business itself since brothels have strict laws contrasted with strip clubs. We're a very high profile business worldwide, so we can't screw this up, Hoff said. The girls are really excited. Really, are they? Are you educating them on what this is? Bitcoin risked a great deal when it was the money of the dark web for payments. The ups, yeah, I, thank you, Greg. I knew he was at the Bunny Ranch. Didn't that fool spent like 80 grand? 80 grand for that? You know, the reason why I never liked strip clubs and stuff is because I'm like, why in the world? Number one, I went to Morehouse College. You have to pay for sex. That's number one. Number two, why in the world would I want to go to the strip club and be throwing money around just to be teased? I'm just, I'm just giving you my own personal preference. You know, there's guys out there, they, they like that kind of stuff. That's just a tease. Why would you want to do that? But anyways, <laughs> let me get back to this. The obscurity, the global exchanges, the speed and efficiency of everything made it ideal for illicit purchases. Yeah, you know, I know what I was about to say. I was my point was Lamar Odom spent like 80 grand in this spot. Really? Really? Now you gotta be careful Spelman, you know, because uh Clark Atlanta University had more females than Spelman did. <laughs> Spelman, if you don't if you've never been to Atlanta you know the AUC Atlanta University Center. And you've got you've got Spelman, Morehouse, Clark Atlanta University, and the defunct Morris Brown College. All on the same campus. Like in California and in the Inland Empire, we have the the Pomona Colleges with Harvey Mudd, Claremont McKenna, you know, Pomona College, all on the same campus. Now here's the thing. We quickly realized my freshman year, that the ratio for men to women was like 15 to one because Spelman was an all girls school and then Clark was an actual university. And that university was like 80% female. And the girls there didn't even wanna look at the dudes from Clark, they wanted Morehouse men. And then you gotta take into account all the gay dudes. So that ratio shot up to like 25 to one. <laughs> we had a great time down there in the 90s. Now, but you know, the one thing I always never understood was, even though the ratio was that high, every girl had a man. Now, how how you figure that? If the ratio's like 21 to one, how can every girl have a man? How'd that happen? Well, <laughs> 
It's because the dudes had like five or six or seven different women, and the girls always thought that they were the only ones. Uh, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get into that right now. We're going way off topic. I want to talk about Atlanta in the '90s. <laughs> so let's get back to this article. Did I finish it yet? No, no, no. I'm almost finished. Okay. Bitcoin risked a great deal when it was the money of the dark web for payments. The obscurity, the global exchanges, the speed and efficiency of everything made it ideal for illicit purchases. It was utilized to purchase a wide range of things from the shady underbelly of the Internet. Yet now, as it has ventured into the light, its picture has changed. <laughs> Hey, don't be sleeping on the couch. That's funny. <laughs> oh, yes, I has a, I'm not even going to go there. The digital currency represents a considerable new asset for the Wall Street financial analyst rather than the illegal arms merchant. The aspects that made it an accomplishment in a hidden world remain. What's more? As a direct result of this, it seems that it is coming full circle, again, being the method of paying for sex. Obviously, this is another time in a significantly less dark circumstance. However, the manner by which Bitcoin moves is demonstrating its flexibility to corner and re-corner all aspects of the market. Oh, like I said, blockchain technology is going to interrupt every single industry you can think of, including the sex industry. You know, I'll know Bitcoin made it if I were to go back to Atlanta and I were to go down to West End. And in West End, you know, if you're in the, from the AUC, you know where that is. The Marta Station, that's right across the street from the West End Mall. But that side street right behind is this purple and pink building. I don't know if it's the same colors now. Called Montres. And nobody, I mean nobody, should ever, 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 ever go up in Montres. But if they start accepting Bitcoin and Montres, then we know Bitcoin has made it. <laughs> Now, I promised, because a lot of people have shot me messages, I'm, I'm not going to call you guys out. You know, I won't out you on this, but you asked certain questions. You were curious about a conversation that we had on a Facebook Live a couple of weeks ago. And the article was about the perfect conversation to strike up at a bar is Bitcoin, a cryptocurrency. And I thought that it was an interesting article. But the reason why, uh-oh, Erica says I'm muffled again, and I have not moved. I haven't moved an inch. I think it's probably because of the the music. The music might have made me muffled, so I should be good right now because it's not playing. So, yeah, and those of you that are just joining us late, I just finished both articles. So you're going to want to go back and listen to this from the beginning because I'm almost finished here. But I did promise I was going to share how uh, about the bar conversation. Think about this. How many of you last year for Thanksgiving, you went probably home, you went to your, your relative's house, and cryptocurrency or Bitcoin became a conversation. And you know about Bitcoin and crypto, but they don't. That's an awkward conversation to have. I remember talking with my brother and he was asking me questions about Bitcoin. And I was like, and then I started talking about some of the other coins, Ripple, Ethereum. He was like, whoa, whoa, what's all that? I said, well, there are other altcoins or other cryptocurrencies. And he said, crypto what? What is that, kryptonite? He had no idea what a blockchain was, no idea what cryptocurrency was. And I was telling one, the lack of education is serious, which is why we're launching an education platform. And I'm going to read you guys in a moment 
uh, that if you weren't on my Facebook live this morning, what an individual shot to me, a, a private message. And I get this stuff every single day. In fact, these type of questions take up 90% of my time. In fact, I'm going to read it to you right now so you understand what I mean. And this is the same type of conversations that we have during Thanksgiving. We also have during um, Christmas break. How many of you like during Christmas time had to sit there and talk to friends and family about Bitcoin? Especially me. You're a fly on the wall in my house. And people are asking me, mm, what is Bitcoin? Brandy, can you tell us about Bitcoin? Is that Ponzi thing over yet? <laughs> Did Bitcoin crash and collapse yet? You know, the cousins and the uncles that think they're being funny. Oh, of course, my internet connection on my computer just dropped. Let me see if I can pull that. I think it's coming back up here. All right, here we go. So let me pull up that conversation again. And it's because of this conversation why in 2018 we are focusing on crypto education. Crypto education is going to save you a whole lot, a whole lot of learning curves. So I'm not going to say this, this gentleman's name, but he shot me a message and he said, Hey, Brandon, what's all about this crypto, Bitcoin, etc.? I'm so, so confused. Is it money that we invest for it to yield in the future? How much money does one need to invest? Please educate me. Now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that he's asking the questions because that means he wants to learn. But if you get a thousand of these a day, there's no possible way I can sit here and answer it because I answer one question is going to lead to three more. There's no way I can answer all of those questions, which is why we need to have a systematic place, a system in place where we can point people to and they can basically get their hand held and learn. I mean, it, most people now are starting to hear about Bitcoin, but they don't fully understand it. They hear about it at the water cooler. They hear about their coworkers talking about it. They might overhear another person having a conversation while they're at Starbucks. They might hear of a relative that's invested in it and made a whole lot of money. And then they say, you know what, I need to get involved as well. But they have no idea where to get started. They don't know if they need to, if they go to YouTube and Google it, a million and one pages pop up. And you don't know if you can trust the source. So that's why we're coming out with our education platform. And we're going to show you how you can earn while you learn. But that's not what our topic is tonight. Tonight we're talking about crypto in the sex industry. And people have been asking me a lot of questions since I did that article about having a conversation at the bar. You know, that's a great way to strike up a conversation, Bitcoin. And so people say, Brandy, can you talk about that again? I mean, I mean, I'm looking to, you know, have conversations with people <laughs> and I want to know that stuff. Well, first, you need to be educated on Bitcoin. You need to know this space and you don't need to know a whole lot. Because a little bit that you know now is more than what the public knows. So you don't need to have a master's degree in Bitcoin and crypto education. But the little information you have, you can take to the bar and get you some crypto booty. And here's how you do that. And I want to, I want to play this scenario out to you. I'm not a bar guy. I never have been. I'm not the guy to go hang out at the bar to try to pick up a girl or anything like that. I'm a homebody. I stay home and chill. But for those of you that are, and you love doing that, you love going out and hanging out, here's how you separate yourself from everybody else. You're at the bar, and you see other guys having conversations, and most of the time it's all about them trying to impress the other person or somebody to get themselves attention. I remember one lesson my father taught me when I was in high school, and I was a little ugly duckling. People called me Urkel back in those days. 
call me Scotty Pippen and Humpty Hump because I had a big nose and big glasses and acne and braces. And I was smart. And I was little. <laughs> Everything changed my senior year. It was like night and day. Urkel to Stefan. But during the most of my high school, you know, I didn't have the attention, attention of the girls. And my father taught me. He said, if you want to have more girls than anybody else, learn to listen and shut up. Learn to agree and nod your head. For a high school girl, listen to everything she has to say and act as if it's the greatest thing that interests you in the world. If you're able to do that, you will have no problem with women. And I put that in practice. I think I started my junior year before I had my transformation. And he was right. By the time my senior year came around, oh, it was on and popping. But he was right. Most high school boys, all they want to do is talk about themselves. Oh, I'm captain of the football team. Oh, I did this. I did that. I blah, 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 blah. But listen to her and watch things change. So same kind of thing if you're in a bar. Listen to her. And when you do open your mouth, it better be something that's going to get her attention. And you know what will? If you happen to mention anything about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, here's the psychology behind it. If you're in the bar, chances are you've had a few drinks in you, right? So your inhibitions have been lowered just a little bit. And if she hears you say something about Bitcoin or crypto, she's probably heard about it, may not know much about it, and always wanted to learn about it, but not comfortable asking, especially in a public or somebody that they don't know. But you get a little bit of alcohol in them. And you start talking about Bitcoin. Watch her eyes light up. Really? You're into the whole Bitcoin thing? My brother's into that. I don't really understand it too much. I saw it on the news. My coworker talked about it. I know it's something I should get into, but I don't even know anything about it. You know, what do you know? Can, can you tell me more about it? And you start talking about Bitcoin. Watch her body language. It will be all towards you. <laughs> and then all you say, sure, we could talk more about Bitcoin. How about dinner tomorrow night? In a more private setting. I mean, think about that. It's not hard. It's a simple thing to do. You become educated in Bitcoin. It is now a status symbol. That's right. You're walking around with a Lamborghini in your head because you know and are investing in Bitcoin. You will get all the attention in the world. And you start sharing your knowledge. I think I said on the bar, <laughs> a guy that says, you know, you want to show her a little bit about Bitcoin. You pull out your wallet, or, or not your wallet. You know, those guys try to do that and impress girls with how much money they have. But you pull out your smartphone. And in your smartphone, you say, yeah, this is, I'm all into Bitcoin. Look at the coin market cap right now. And you happen to have it land on one of your Bitcoin wallets. I mean, it just so happens to be there. Guys, I hope you're taking some notes. I'm giving you some nuggets here. But that's it for the night. Those of you who came on late, you want to go back to the beginning. And if you have very sensitive ears, then this is a Facebook Live that is not for you. Late Night Crypto Talk, we are talking about how the blockchain technology not is infiltrating every single industry on the planet, which includes the adult entertainment industry. And they are making a killing off of this. Even the pot industry. Legalized cannabis. So I hope you guys learned something new tonight. I did. Like I do every time I read some new article. It's Friday night. Take this information. And put it into action. You never know. 
you just might get lucky. Become a Bitcoin expert, a Bitcoin entrepreneur. And we will see you on the other side. Good night, everybody. I will be back tomorrow morning when I go get my donuts downtown for early morning crypto talk. Enjoy your weekend if I don't hear from you. I'm so excited about what we have coming in the next couple of weeks. I promise you the entire world is going to know about this. Those of you that's getting involved with us now, you don't realize the position that you're in with us. If you want to know more about it, shoot me a private message and we'll put you on the list. Good night, everybody. Bitcoin Brandon out. Bye-bye.